Hey guys, welcome to Flight Test. Today I'll be showing you how to set up telemetry tune so you can tune your Aura board using an SRXL2 receiver from your transmitter. Now this works on only SRXL2 compatible receivers, but it does support the whole line of Auras from the Aura 5 all the way up to the Aura 8 and Aura Pro. This process will work the same for any of the Aura boards, but today I'll be showing you how to do it on the FT Aura 5 Lite. The first thing you want to do if you haven't already is download the Aura configuration tool and if you're a little bit confused about how to do it, we'll link a video on how to do it in the description below. Now that you have the Aura configuration tool downloaded, you want to make sure that you're using an SRXL2 compatible receiver. Currently there's only two SRXL2 compatible receivers offered from Spectrum, uh, which are the SPM4650 receiver and the SPM4651T receiver. Today we're going to be using the 4650. Now you'll also need an OR board, the uh, USB cable that comes with it, a servo connector, and of course your transmitter. Now before we get started, you'll want to make sure that your transmitter is updated with the latest airware firmware update from Spectrum. If you're not sure how to do this, you can check out the video linked in the description below. Now let's move on to setting up the receiver. Now the SPM4650 receiver I'm using today comes with a few different things inside the package. First of all, the receiver, and then you have some heat shrink, a little four pin connector, and a four pin connector as a wire. First, I'm gonna solder the little uh, four pin connector onto the receiver. Now make sure when you're putting this on that you put the connector on the same side as the little button. And make sure you don't bridge any wires together like I just did. If you do, uh, you can simply take the tip of your iron and wipe it off. Sometimes sliding the tip of the iron between the pins will help remove that bridge. And let's go ahead and throw some heat shrink on here. Now the receiver's all ready to go, let's move on to the wires. Now I'm going to show you how to solder up the cable to connect your SRXL2 receiver to the Aura, but if you'd rather not solder it, uh, there is a pre-made cable available from the Flex Innovation store and we'll have a link to it in the description below. It's also important to note that the SRXL2 receivers use a new 4-pin connector that's different from the old 3-pin connector of other Spectrum receivers in the past. The wiring of this connector is a bit different and it's not backwards compatible, so just be aware of that when you're setting it up. You'll notice that the connector that comes with the receiver has 4 wires while the servo connector we'll be using has 3 wires. Now don't worry about this, we're only going to use 3 of the wires from the receiver wire. Now let's go ahead and cut them both in half. Now for the wires, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're using the correct wire ends. For the four pin cable that comes with the receiver, you don't have to worry about it because uh, the wire actually comes with the same connector on both sides. But if you're using a servo connector from a servo extension or something, make sure you use the connector that looks like this. First, I'm just gonna strip these wires so I have some bare wire to solder to. Now, a wire stripper works great for this, but if you don't have a wire stripper, a knife and some flush cutters work great as well. We're also gonna strip the wires from this four pin connector, uh, but just remember that you don't need to worry about the gray one, so we can just leave that. Now, let's go ahead and tin these wires. Before tinning, I like to kinda twist the wires together so they don't fray. Now to solder these guys up, we're not gonna simply match up the colors because, well, they don't match. Uh, so instead, we're going to match up the uh, connections. Uh, the black wire on the four pin connector goes to the darkest wire on the servo connector, so that'll be the brown wire. The orange wire, which is the power wire for the four pin connector, goes to the middle wire on the servo connector. And then the brown wire on the four pin connector is the signal wire, which goes to the lightest color wire on the server connector. So let's go ahead and solder that up. Before you solder, make sure that you have some heat shrink over your wires. If you have helping hands to help you solder, that's a great tool to use. But if you don't, uh, some sort of weight like these flush cutters uh, work pretty well for just holding things in place. Now we're gonna slide the heat shrink over and shrink it on. Give this wire a little twist and then we're done. Now again, with the gray wire, we're not gonna do anything with it, so you can either chop it off or just wrap it around like this. In either case, just don't worry about it too much. Now all we have to do is plug the four pin connector into our receiver, and that's all we have to do for the receiver part. Now let's move on to the Aura. So for the Aura, we're gonna update it to the latest firmware, which in this case is 1.14. Go ahead and open up your Aura configuration tool. 
and we'll go ahead and connect the Aura. And hit connect. Now that we're connected, go up to Aura Tools, update Aura firmware, and we'll see that the current firmware on the board is version 1.13. The version we want is the newest available firmware, which is 1.14. Now we'll go ahead and put in our email address and install the update. Go ahead and hit yes. And you can see that the firmware update is downloaded on the computer and is now installing on the Aura. All right, our Aura is updated and we can go ahead and hit OK and disconnect from the configuration tool. Now that we're done updating the Aura with the newest firmware, let's go ahead and set up the transmitter. We just go to model select, scroll down to new model, and hit create. Now while we're in the system setup tab, let's also go down to channel assign and scroll down to next, scroll down to gear and select a three position switch for your flight mode. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to use switch C. Now we can go back to the main menu and go from there. Now you can see we're on the main screen and we can go into the menu and scroll down to telemetry. Once we're in here, let's go to uh, this first tab here and scroll over until we see text gen. T X T G E N. Oh, there we go. Text gen. And we can just leave that how it is, display act and go back to the main menu. Now the reason why we're setting up a text gen screen on our transmitter is that this is how our spectrum transmitter communicates with the Aura. It's important to note that this feature is only supported by SRXL2 compatible receivers. So if you don't have a receiver that's compatible with SRXL2, unfortunately you won't be able to use this feature. Now that we have the transmitter all set up, let's plug things into the Aura. Your receiver is going to be plugged into port B. Now there's two port Bs on here. There's one that is a weird little connector pin and the other one is a normal servo connector and that's the one we're gonna be using. We'll just plug that in and make sure that we have the ground wire the uh, black or brown wire uh, closest to the back of the board. Now Josh actually made this little Sportster airplane mock-up, uh, which has all the servos we need, so I'm just gonna plug it into the Aura and we can see how it works. Currently, this Aura is programmed to have two ailerons, so the first port will be throttle, the second port will be the left aileron, the third port will be the right aileron, the fourth port will be elevator, and the fifth port will be rudder. Your servo ports might be a little different just depending on what aircraft type you're setting up. And now we're going to bind the receiver to our transmitter. Now this particular receiver, which is the SPM4650, has a bind button, so we're going to press and hold that while plugging in the battery. And as you can see, the receiver has a blinking light, which means it's in bind mode. We can hold down the bind button on our transmitter and turn it on. Now that we have everything hooked up to the Aura, we can go to our transmitter and from the main screen, we can scroll all the way to the right and you should see a screen that says Aura Live Data. Now this shows you uh, which flight mode you're in. So at the top, you can see the flight mode changing as I flip the flight mode switch. And at the bottom, it also shows you your P gains for roll, pitch, and yaw. Now to adjust settings straight from the transmitter to the Aura, we're going to have to enter the Aura Telemetry Tune screen. To get to this screen, uh, center your sticks and lower your throttle for at least three seconds, and then flip your flight mode switch up and down about three and four times quickly. As you can see, this brings you right into the Aura Telemetry Tune screen. From here, at the top, you can still see which flight mode you're in, uh, one, two, or three, as well as the name. Whenever you're tuning from the transmitter, just make sure that you have the correct flight mode selected and it's the flight mode that you want to change settings on. Once we're in the telemetry tune screen, you're going to navigate the screen not with the roller, but with the right stick um, or with aileron and elevator. Hit down elevator and up elevator, we can navigate the screen. As you can see from the transmitter, we can adjust dual rate settings, expo, gain, reversing servos, sub trim, stick priority, orientation of the board, and scale. Now from here, the menu is fairly intuitive and you just use aileron and elevator to navigate the whole screen and change the settings. So let's actually go ahead and adjust our sub trims so that all of our servos are centered. Of course, you can use the Aura Telemetry Tune feature to do many more powerful things than just trimming your servos. 
Uh, you can also adjust your P gains, uh, your dual rates, expo, reversing servos, all that stuff, which is really important to dialing in your plane and getting the flight characteristics that you're looking for at the flying field without ever having to bring your laptop or computer. But for now, I'll just show you the basics with Subtrim. So we scroll down to Subtrim and when we want to select it, we just hit aileron to the right and we're in the Subtrim menu. And we're gonna scroll over to right aileron because it looks like our right aileron is just a little bit under. And now we'll just wanna give it a little bit of Subtrim one way or the other, doesn't really matter yet, and we'll see which way it goes. To increase or decrease the Subtrim, we're just gonna use the aileron uh, stick and push that left or right. And we can just set this to any arbitrary value. I'm just gonna go to 100. Now we can scroll down to test, uh, just to see where the subtrim is. And then as you can see, the subtrim brought us pretty close to center. Uh, it looks like it could use a little bit more, so we'll give it maybe uh, 110 or 120. Uh, and to exit the testing menu, all you have to do is hold the aileron and elevator stick three seconds to exit as it says on the screen. I'm just gonna hold it to the corner and now we're out of the uh, testing mode. Now we can scroll back over to right aileron and uh, bump that up to about 110. And that should give us a pretty centered servo. Cool. Now that we have all our subtrims figured out, let's go ahead and save our changes. To do this, scroll down to done, hit aileron right, and save changes. If you make any changes to your settings that you don't want to save, you can just scroll down to undo changes and that'll erase all the changes you made in that menu and just revert back to what you had. Once you're done with all of your tuning, you can go ahead and scroll down to done and now you're back to the Aura Live Data screen, which means that you're no longer in uh, telemetry tune mode and then you can scroll all the way back left with your roller and you're back on the main screen. Now everything should be functioning like normal and all of your changes that you just made should be saved. If you guys have any other questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below and also check out our Aura video playlist which has a bunch of useful videos that guide you through programming your Aura. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.